Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So today I want to talk to you about something pretty important. Uh, we had a close call the other day that could have been a lot worse uh, had we not planned ahead. Um, but I've learned a lot of things since living off grid over the last 13 or so years. And uh, one of the things that I help advise people on is uh, solar, alternative energy, and just some of the things that we've tried and what we've learned throughout the years. And uh, one of those things is battery types. Uh, we've gone through lead acid batteries, just like the old golf cart batteries. That's what we first started with when we began our off-grid journey. Then we moved up to AGM batteries. And then we've now graduated up to um, lithium iron phosphate batteries. I was really skeptical about moving up to the lithium iron phosphate batteries years ago because I had heard so many bad things about lithium. And I didn't know the difference between lithium iron phosphate and lithium ion that's a lot of difference there but i didn't know that at the time but i had heard horror stories of people's lithium batteries exploding or catching fire there's plenty of videos out there showing you know electric vehicles catching on fire or phones or e-bikes or all kinds of things catching on fire and once these fires start they're really hard to put out and so when uh, I had a friend of mine came to me and said, hey, you should do lithium iron phosphate. All I heard was the word lithium. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to do that. I don't want that near my house or in my house. And it's, it's, I'm, I'm worried about that. And he said, no, no, no. Lithium iron phosphate or otherwise called LIFEPO4, those are much more stable. And they can benefit you greatly if you move up to those. And so I did a little more research, concluded that he was correct. And uh, I decided to go ahead and do that. Now, fast forward to the other day. When I came into my house, we had some friends over at our pavilion. And we were just relaxing, enjoying the day. And I, we had been, I'd been over there for maybe an hour or two. I came back in the house and I smelled this horrible smell. What is that smell? And sure enough, it was my battery bank. Or one battery in the bank. So recently, I did, uh, me and a friend of mine, the guy who helped me install these batteries and put these batteries in place, uh, we determined that we needed to balance my batteries. In the old lead acid days, that would be called equalization, but that doesn't really matter. So we balanced the batteries, and I was charging each of these batteries individually to get them back up to where they needed to be so we could create the bank and then put them back into circulation for my house system. But I put the connectors on wrong. My fault. I put the I put the connectors on wrong. I put it on the positive terminal, and instead of the negative terminal, I put it on the BMS, which I thought was the negative terminal. And what that did was it completely bypassed uh, the the BMS's the battery management system's ability to say, "Hey, this battery is overcharged. Our charge now. We can turn it off." And it just kept overcharging and overcharging. And I want to show you what that looks like. What happened? I want to show you the battery. Had this been a regular lithium battery, my house would have probably burned down. There was no doubt. I, I'm, I am a hundred, I'm convinced that there's probably a 90% chance my house, this would have caught fire, my house would have burned down. Because once you take a lithium battery and it starts to catch fire, there's no putting it out. It's just going to burn until it's, it can't be, until it's done burning. And if there's other lithium batteries next to it, which in this case there was, lithium iron batteries, those are going to catch those other lithium batteries on. And you're, I mean, it's going to be like a giant chain reaction and you're never going to put that out until it's all done burning. Until the house is down to ashes, it's not going to stop burning. So um, I'm very grateful that uh, I put in the lithium iron phosphates instead of the lithium. Now, in the past, I've also talked about, before I show you this battery, I've also, I've also talked about how uh, there have been some close calls, one here locally where someone had one of these battery generators, these solar generators, but the solar generator had a lithium or a nickel manganese cobalt type chemistry to that battery and it caught fire in the middle of the night and luckily he was able to get it out of the house before it caught anything in the house. There was some damage, but before it caused too much damage. Um, some people, most people are not that lucky. Uh, that's why I tell people, if you're going to get one of these systems put in your house, one of these battery generators, solar generators, make sure it's lithium iron phosphate, a life po 4 type battery. Let me show you this battery <laughs> and show you what it did. 
and I'll walk you through it. So here's the battery as it sits today. Uh, all these things have been taken off here, um, but you can see how these cells have just pillowed and ballooned up. And it's where it's, it, you know, this all used to fit inside this little box here, but all of the cells, there's four cells, and they've all expanded and ballooned up to push outside of the box uh, that it came in. And inside, when you look at it, you can see each one of these blew their top. Actually, that one didn't, but it still ballooned up. But each one of these blew their top and off gassed, and that was the smell that I smelled when I walked. It's kind of like this chemical cleaning smell. It didn't last very long, but um, I turned a fan on, and it was gone within, really within like a few hours. It was all dissipated. But it off gassed, and they ballooned up, and it melted some of the circuitry. Uh, some of the circuitry over here, you can see this thing a little melted. It was down in there, too. Um, and I think the BMS might be okay. We may reuse the BMS, but it just completely destroyed the cells. It completely destroyed some of the circuitry and, um, it's, it, it's done. It's done. But had that been a lithium battery, just a regular lithium battery, this would have caught fire. And when we, we found it, I immediately unplugged the, the, the connectors that were charging the battery. Um, and then, uh, you know, I ran to get my friend because, you know, he knows more about this stuff than I do. And, we, and he disconnected it, cut the wire, and then we took it out of the house uh, to, to let it cool just in case it did flare up. But it never did. But this was really super hot. It was like really hot. Uh, this thing had been charging for about two hours incorrectly uh, or maybe more than that before it finally off gassed and uh, ruined everything. But, again, this is why I stress to you, lithium iron phosphate. This did not catch fire. It's a much more stable battery system, even when you do something wrong. Now, most of the batteries you're going to find out there today are going to be like this all, it's like all in one box. And, like, this is a homemade unit, okay? This guy made this from scratch. He bought the cells individually, wired it all up, put in the circuitry, the BMS system, and then we pro he programmed it, and then it's you know it's got like a way to so it's it's all programmed by him. Most of the systems, the batteries you're finding out there today are not like this. Okay, they're all in a nice neat box, and all this stuff is in a nice neat package. Um, but again, they're stable battery systems. That's why I recommend lithium iron phosphate batteries. This was a homemade unit, homemade system, and it was charged incorrectly because. I connected the BMS as the negative and it it did the following. It blew up, you know, basically ballooned. The ones the lithium iron phosphates that you're gonna buy at the store, guys, are the ones that are the ones that you might get for a home system. You're not gonna be able to charge those incorrectly. You're not gonna have like a terminal that you can mess up. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that. This is something made on a homemade system. But my point of doing this video is to show the stability of the chemical chemistry that's inside these batteries. They're much more stable than the regular lithium batteries. I hope all of that makes sense. If this is way above your head and you don't have solar, you don't want nothing to do with solar, well, that's fine. I mean, I get it. You're here at the channel because you, you like the stuff that you see on here and you may be tuning in for this video. But if you've ever thought about doing stuff off-grid... I, I would highly recommend you make sure you get the lithium iron phosphate batteries. That's all this video is about. And I want to show you what this one did, even though I made the mistake of charging it incorrectly because I had an extra terminal here I connected to. It still held together. It didn't burn down, didn't catch fire. And we're going to go ahead and swap this one out for a new one. And we'll get my system back online, which is which it's already on back online. But because uh, we have we took we took the bank out, this bank will be replaced. But just this battery will be fixed, replaced, and then back into circulation with the normal bank. If you are interested in solar and you want to learn more about this stuff, you can go just search for an American Homestead Solar, and you can see all the videos I've done throughout the years and and some of the diagrams that are in those videos. Uh, that you can learn from, the wiring diagrams that I've put up. i put up all kinds of information. You can see the progression of how we've come through the years and, how, and the things we've upgraded, and uh, hopefully that will be a learning tool for you guys. Uh, but the, what I've always told people, and sometimes this makes people mad, is that you can do these things yourself. You can learn these things. You, you know, you don't need to have 
uh, some sort of license, even though the county or state you may live in may want you to have those things, or you can do these things yourself. Don't let anyone tell you you can't. Uh, just do the research, be informed, and then uh, go ahead and, and do it. That's the only way you learn is when you just go ahead and do it. All right, guys. Hope this video was informative. Love you guys. See you next time in the homestead. Bye. One of the best perks about living off grid is that I never pay an electric bill. I love being my own power company, but that means when things go wrong, I have to be the one on call. So I try and use reliable components for my power production. For the last couple of years, I've been promoting UPI solar generators. I've been using them and abusing them, and as it turns out, they are pretty good products. They have power generators for all occasions, and they can be charged by permanent or portable solar panels, as well as AC power. They offer true lithium iron phosphate batteries, and this is important. Recently, a family in my area had a different brand that uses the less stable nickel manganese cobalt or NMC type batteries. The unit caught fire in the middle of the night. It was a scary situation and it caused damage to the home, but thankfully nobody was hurt. The generator, as you can see, was a total loss. This drives home the point on why it's so important to employ solar generators like the UPI's brand that uses the much more safe and stable technology of lithium iron phosphate, otherwise called LIFEPO4. They offer small generators for travel or for powering an entire home and everything in between. These are great backups to have in a medical emergency or to power a freezer full of your favorite meat products, or as I have shown in past videos for even backup AC and DC power sources for ham radio communications. If the grid goes down, you're going to be thankful you have one of these units. You can find the link in the description of this video or click on the banner ad found on the front page of our website at AmericanHomestead.com. Right here, that banner ad, right there on an AmericanHomestead.com. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>